Okay, so let's talk about the life cycle of uh, malaria. Now, when it comes to the life cycle of malaria, it occurs in about 12 stages. And this life cycle is divided into three parts, of which we'll look at uh, the uh, exoerythrocytic cycle. It means that the cycle that happens before the red blood cells are attacked. Then we look at the erythrocytic cycle itself, which also happen in the human being, but at this stage it is the red blood cells now which are being damaged and being attacked. Then from there we'll look at the sporogenic uh, cycle which occurs inside the mosquito. So the first stage is that uh, the mosquito will take a blood meal. <clears throat> so at stage one what is happening is that the mosquito takes a blood meal and when it takes a blood meal it injects in the blood of this particular human being a state of the plasmodium which is known as the sporozoids which is the immature form or the baby form of the plasmodium parasite and this is what is released into the blood of this particular human being now you need to understand that uh, the mosquito survives by feeding from animal blood and that as it feeds from animal blood it releases um, saliva to prevent blood from clotting and at the same time this now helps the mosquito to feed as much as it, it can now once the sporozoids are injected into the human being's blood these sporozoids will need to mature into a state known as merozoids because it is the state at merozoids that is able to penetrate the red blood cells so this maturation from sporozoids uh, to merozoids can only occur inside the liver. As a result, the sporozoids now will enter blood circulation. And as blood is circulation, the sporozoids are going to infect the liver cells. So inside the liver cells, for these sporozoids to mature into merozoids, what is going to happen is that they are going to the sporozoids are going to divide into segmented states known as the schizons. So they divide into segmented states known as schizons, and the schizons are going to end up rupturing the host liver cell. And when that host liver cell is ruptured, what the host liver cell will release is what is known as the, the merozoids. And these are the ones now being released at stage G. Five. So once the merozoids are now released, so once the merozoids are now released, we, it means that at this point now what is going to happen is a cycle known as the erythrocytic cycle stage. So at this particular point, these merozoids are going to now seek out an infected red blood cells. So when the red blood cells are found now, the merozoids are going to penetrate that particular host red blood cell and when they penetrate the host red blood cell the merozoids again develop into what are known as the trophozoids so the trophozoids once they develop again they are going to divide into segmented states known as the schizons like the way it had occurred inside the liver but this time it is occurring inside the red blood cells because by dividing into segmented state known as schizons, they will continue expanding the red blood cell until at some point the membrane gives in and it ruptures, releasing what it is harboring inside. So you will now find that the schizons will continue dividing, dividing until the red blood cell at stage 6 is ruptured. And this red blood cell, once ruptured, it is going to release it the schizo the, the merozoids rather back into the blood now after several erythrocytic cycles or after several red blood cells have been attacked and damaged in this particular manner resulting in production of more merozoids in the blood of the human being there is going to be gameto uh, there is going to be formation of the gametocytes so the gametocytes, it is the male version of the parasite and the female version. Of course, there will be formation of the microgametocyte, which is the male version of the parasite, and the macrogametocyte, which is the female version in, of the parasite. 
So once the gametocytes are formed, remember it is the nature of the mosquito that they feed from animal blood. So another mosquito again is going to bite this human being who is infected and this particular mosquito is going to ingest uh, the gametocytes. Now you need to understand that the life cycle of malaria can only be completed by the female Anopheles mosquito. Uh, if the SSA fly bites you, this malaria life cycle can't be completed. It is the same uh, as uh, human beings. Remember that uh, we can only give birth by sleeping with another uh, human being who is female. But if we had to sleep with a dog or a chicken or a cow, we are not going to have a half chicken, half human being uh, kind of living organism because the life cycle cannot be completed like that. And at the same time, it does not mean uh, the same girlfriend or boyfriend you have is the same is the only person you can uh, fall pregnant from. Uh, all you need is probably any other man or woman uh, to have sexual intercourse with them, and then you become pregnant. It means that you're able to complete the life cycle by sleeping with any other human being. So it is the same thing that is happening here as well. You don't need the same mosquito that had bitten you to bite you again to complete this life cycle. All you need is any other mosquito to bite you and the life cycle continues. So now this is why we are saying at stage 8 that as the mosquito is taking a blood meal, it is going to ingest the gametocytes. Now once the gametocytes are ingested, what happens next? So now the gametocytes, like I mentioned, we have the female uh, gametocyte, which is known as the macrogametocyte, and the, uh, the male gametocyte, which is known as the, uh, the microgametocyte. Think of it as the egg and the sperm. So the two at stage nine now, they are going to uh, fuse together. And when they fuse together, you are going to find that they are going to ukinate. Then after ukinating, uh, there is going to be formation of an oocyst. So once the oocyst forms, this is happening in the midgut of the mosquito. Once the oocyst forms, the oocyst is going to be ripe at some stage. And then it is going to end up bursting. So once it bursts, the oocyst is going to release the sporozoids. So when the sporozoids again, they are released. When the sporozoids are released, the only thing that will now need to occur is that the sporozoids will now migrate to the salivary glands of this particular mosquito. And at this particular point, all we need is just for this mosquito to bite another human being, and then the life cycle continues. So that is about the life cycle of malaria. Uh, it's good to have you on this channel, and thank you so much for taking time to listen to this uh, life cycle. Till next time.